A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. We got another JLC PCB uh, box of goodies here. So I guess just open this up. And I actually ordered quite a number of boards. And I'm not going to ruin the surprise on some of the future projects I've been doing. Uh, but I'll show you the two that I am working on today. And they're these. So these are two boards that I whipped up recently. And this is actually the second revision because the first one I kind of screwed up on. I didn't really think through and it just ended up being impractical and wasn't going to work the way I wanted it to. Anyway, these may just look like random PCBs, but you might notice that I used um, sort of this grid infill pattern. And that's because I made some touch sensors. And I found a capacitive touch library uh, for the Arduino and I wanted to test it out and play with what I could... Uh, make with it and so two things I thought that'd be interested is like a scroll wheel and a slider and these are designs I've never tried before per se I tried a older version of the touch touch wheel sort of design that looked very similar to this but I ended up using um, those uh, six pin SOT uh, touch controllers I, I think they're like TP5 somethings uh, and those are pretty much little tiny microprocessors and all they do is the touch sensing algorithm and they're pretty cheap, but um, it gets impractical if you want to do like larger, you know, more sensing pads. And so on the previous design, I actually had a bunch of those on the back for each of these segments and it didn't really work and they were prone to like a lot of error, like they would, you know, miss touch, miss misfire. Uh, if you got close to it, um, you know, multiple ones would trigger that shouldn't have been triggering. So yeah, this time I, I opted for trying that, um, that touch library. And the great thing about that is you can actually like tune the sensitivity and you get the raw data output. So you can do a lot of interesting, uh, like gesture, um, reading and whatnot. So yeah, uh, in this library, you will actually need, um, some like relatively large resistances, uh, because the way that it actually works is, um, so you have your microcontroller pin. I'm just going to, there we go. It's an IO. And from that pin, what we do is we put a resistor, and this will be something like a MEG, um, effectively to ground. Um, this library works a little bit differently. There's actually like a, another sense trace that goes in place of ground uh, so that you can make like matrices and stuff. But anyway, we go there and the pin is going to have a parasitic capacitance. I'm just going to call it CP. And then from there, we have the actual pad itself. And we're going to have our finger coming to touch it. So yeah, what you're actually doing, um, the pin is, um, is oscillating. So it's charging up, so it charges, um, you know, there's some leakage through this resistance and it's very small amount because it's a large value resistance. And mostly it's charging up this capacitor um, to whatever your rail voltage is. So th say that's five volts. And uh, what it does is it'll switch this, that's when it's set to an output. When it switches it to an input, uh, there's pretty much no current going into this pin. So you pretty much just have this portion of the circuitry. So some of the, uh, the current from this capacitor will actually go and discharge through this resistor. And you touching, whether you touch this pad or not, you're actually adding kind of a parallel capacitor in addition to this. So you're changing this discharge time. And that's what this input is now looking at uh, when this five volts you know, drops down to zero volts, uh, it's timing how long that takes. And if you're touching this pin, you're actually adding more capacitance in parallel with this one. So it actually increases. It'll be uh, CP, let's just call this um, 
CF for finger capacitance. So then C total is going to be CP plus CF, assuming this also accounts for all other uh, parasitic capacitances within the system. So now this value is greater than um, just this capacitance value, so it's going to take longer to discharge. And so the timer um, is used during this period to calculate how long that takes. And so you can easily compare that against, you know, a threshold whether um, the, the, you know, button has been pressed or not. So this is a very simplified explanation of how capacitance touch sensing works. It gets quite a bit more complex when you go into like sensing, um, not just based off a threshold, but based off of like an analog range. Uh, if you have a slider that has a taper on it, uh, depending where you touch the button, well, actually it'll be sensible um, as like a full range of value. So you can use that to make, um, you know, a lot more sensitive devices. And you can even increase the sensitivity to the point where you don't even have to touch the button, you just get close to it and it can sense the distance of your hand from it. And also when you, when you get into sensing like matrices um, or even like a touchpad where there's like many elements as an array, um, it, it gets a bit more complex than this, but this is a good enough explanation anyway. So yeah, uh, that's essentially what I'm, I'm using, the, the library that I'm using, how that works. And there are some considerations in terms of layout, how you're supposed to lay things out. Uh, one of them is uh, you're not supposed to have, try to keep you know quite a bit of distance between uh, traces with different signals. So these are right next to each other. So I, I ran, this is actually two sets of three. So every third pad is the same. So there's really only three contacts on here, but it looks like six because they're doubled up. So to prevent, you know, this one from triggering when you press this one, you want the trace to be quite a bit away and have some like guard uh, ground in between. So it can kind of mask. And the other two pads I have routed on the back side. And that's just sort of to keep the signals distinct enough so that when I touch this one, this one doesn't trigger, for instance. Um, other than that, this board is just very simple. There's no logic on here. It was just the one meg resistors uh, for the sensing. There's ground. There's, you know, the common pin effectively. And then this side is just for LEDs. So I had it so that when you touch any of the buttons, the LED that corresponds to that pad lights up. This was just for testing. It's not made for any specific project. And the other thing is they suggest, I found a few app notes, they suggest do not use like solid fill ground. Use this like sort of mesh ground. And one thing I couldn't quite easily follow is they said this pattern should actually be at a 45 degree angle to where all the traces are aligned. And the only way I think an eagle to do that would be to rotate the entire board and design it at a 45 degree angle. Uh, because when you generate this, um, this like grid plane infill, it only does it horizontally and vertically. Like you can't change the angle of it. So that's sort of annoying. But anyway, on this design, I wanted to include the controller on the same board. So they said any active elements you should include on the back of the board, at least have it separated by the PCB. Don't have it on the same plane where it could interfere. Any signals um, can inductively, you know, be coupled over and interfere. And so here you could see, I didn't include, um, I included like quite a generous space in between all the pads, uh, just so that they don't like, there's no crosstalk or to minimize crosstalk. Uh, and I included, I, I couldn't fit quite in between each of the slices, but in between the center button and the pads, I included like a, a ground mesh plane uh, just to try to, you know, separate them a little bit more. And on the other side, this is a USB device, so it's just going to plug straight into USB. I've um, downloaded Nico Hood's library for um, human interface devices, and this will allow you to use an AT Mega chip as like a mouse, a keyboard, a game controller, like a media controller. So there's a lot of flexibility in that. And now I realize this isn't unique what I'm doing uh, in terms of using the software. I'm, I'm only tweaking them and using them slightly, you know, in slightly different ways, but I'm not writing most of the software by myself. 
So there's nothing unique about that. I was more interested to learn what the tolerances are for you know, spacing and whatnot to make buttons that work properly. Uh, so these are more for testing the PCB design aspect, not necessarily the software. But I do have some application demo code that I just threw together uh, just to show you what is possible with the software, assuming you design the hardware correctly. We have uh, just two LEDs on the front here, one for uh, power and one that is controlled by the processor that can blink to show you like the mode of the device. So anyway, without further ado, I've actually already assembled uh, this guy and the other one, which I have attached to a Arduino uh, Uno, and we're just going to fire that up. And now the first one actually doesn't really require the computer, it just requires power. So I'm just going to grab a battery bank for this and show you what it does. Now my routine, the way I have it programmed is when you first um, power it up, it'll auto calibrate like the sensitivity on all the different segments so that they don't miss trigger. Uh, so they'll, they'll all be in the off state. And that portion of the code I actually wrote myself. And so it essentially takes measurements from all the, the outputs and it, it lowers a threshold each time until they start triggering without a finger touching them. And then they increase it again just a little bit. So that sets the, the sensitivity to a, you know, a working value. Uh, anyway, here you can see the strip is working and as I touch any of the, the pads. Now these aren't electrically conducted, there's actually solder mass, so it's not anything electrically that I'm doing. Uh, but you can see it triggers each of the three outputs. And like I said, this pin is the same as this pin. This pad is the same as this pad. And this pad is the same as this pad. And the cool thing is you can actually um, you know, touch all three like that. And as you're scrolling, you can see kind of the pattern. So you can easily translate this to something like a rotary encoder uh, in terms of like the way that those work. Um, because essentially what we're looking for is the sequence. If you do, if I, if I scroll uh, right, you can see the lights go down. And when I scroll left, the lights go up. So all our logic has to do is essentially have like a lookup table or some logic to discern what direction you're scrolling in. And per full swipe, it actually does like two rotations essentially. And if you're clever enough, you can actually detect when your finger's in between two buttons to give like slightly higher resolution. So yeah, this works just fine. Now, these wires are really long, so it's not really the best example, um, but the fact that it still works despite having these long wires between the processor, because technically all this is touch sensitive up until, you know, the processor, um, because it's all the same conductor essentially. But yeah, that works fantastic. So as a proof of concept, that is a resounding success. Now the second one is a little more interesting, this pad. So I haven't implemented like any of the, the, the scroll functionality yet. I'm just doing raw button press detection. And so let's um, just as an example, fire up my theme song on my computer. Okay, so I have this pause currently. Now, thanks to uh, Nico Hood's software, uh, this will enumerate as like, essentially like a keyboard when I plug this in. And you heard the windows ding and it's on and it's just sitting there. Now the way I program this, the center button is play pause. So I can play and pause and these two outer buttons, so the way that this pad works is there's actually only there's actually only four buttons uh, even though there's eight segments so diagonal ones are connected so this button is the same as this one this is the same as this this is this and this is this so I'm just going to use the top four buttons and whenever you press a button the light will actually light up to show you that's detected volume let's see volume is yeah there we go 
So volume down, volume up, and track previous and track next. I just have only one song in this playlist, so it's just going to keep repeating it. <laughs> but yeah. There's some still like inner sensitivity problems I'm having. I notice depending on where I touch the button, sometimes it'll trigger the adjacent button. Um, the board itself mostly works. I think maybe in the next revision, I might increase the spacing between the buttons just to make it a little easier on myself. Um, and another function that I added, if we just pause this, is if I press and hold the play pause, the button will invert, or the light will invert, so now it's on steadily. So it'll still work as play pause. Yeah, so say I open Hackaday, when this button is by default in the always on state, th this will act as like a scroll wheel. So I can scroll down, and if I hold it, it just keeps pressing that down button like a keyboard. I can scroll up. And then left and right, probably for that, you, you need to be zoomed in. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you can see that works. And if I want to go back to media mode, I just press and hold and, the, and that turns off. And then you can just press that again to play pause or control your tracks. But anyway, yeah. Um, Let's just scroll around some more. This is just so much fun doing. <laughs> yeah, you can see everything works. So that's really cool. Uh, yeah, like I said, this isn't sort of like an end project or anything. This was actually just a quick test that I wanted to implement. I will have to program the logic so you can use this like a scroll wheel because I actually intend to use this like a touchpad. And I eventually want to make like a wireless uh, trackpad um, with a full matrix and can sense your exact position of your finger on the touchpad. And maybe if I can do like multi-touch, I can do gestures. That would be really cool. Anyway, this was just sort of the first test experimentation. Um, just finding the libraries I tested on a breadboard didn't seem to work. So I, so I thought, why not, um, you know, throw together some PCBs and um, I can order them from JLC PCB, uh, sponsor of this video, and see uh, if they would work. And they do. <laughs> they actually work pretty well from my first try. Uh, like I said, though, um, there are a couple of um, of pages I, I've actually bookmarked that are useful for this. So the first one, this is the Capacitive Sensor Library, and it's by uh, Paul, um, two Pauls, Paul and Paul. Um, and actually pretty good documentation um, on this page uh, in terms of how to hook things up, uh, how to use their library. Uh, in a nutshell, um, yeah, this is just explaining exactly what I explained on the, uh, the board there. Uh, in a nutshell, you have to define kind of two pins, like a send and a receive pin for like, I'm using the send pin as the physical pin that you're touching and the receive is like the common. Uh, so I can hook up multiple buttons to one common, and, and it just essentially goes through all of them and measures. Um, they have their own calibration routine. I wrote my own just for my own purposes. <clears throat> and they even talk about choosing different valued resistors and how that affects range and sensitivity. And grounding issues, they mentioned depending on if you're using a laptop that's plugged into the wall, uh, that could have an effect. I haven't noticed that yet. Um, my device, you know, the boards that I made work whether plugged into a power bank or like a laptop that's grounded. So I haven't seen an issue with that. And yeah, they talk about even expanding scroll wheels and sliding wheels and whatnot. So yeah, that's definitely a useful resource. I'll have that link down below. Uh, the next tab is uh, Nico Hood's HID library. And this goes into you know, a lot of detail about uh, different things you can do. And this software is actually really awesome. So definitely look into that. Next up, uh, we have a application note. Um, let's see, what is this? It's from ST and it's using their library, which is called S-Touch. Uh, but they have layout guides for um, how to space the PCB, what you should or shouldn't do in terms of like how the traces should be laid out. And I actually found this really useful and I referenced this. 
uh, in the PCB design files for like setting the trace widths and how much clearance between the ground plane and the trace. And they even go through like how large or small of a sensor pad you can get away with. Um, and so, yeah, this is actually really interesting. They even go into later on, um, you know, if you have multiple layers, how to do that so that you don't get crosstalk. Uh, talking about ground polygons, sensor shapes, um, how that affects everything. And even, yeah, you can see my design was basically very similar to this one, except for I have more segments. And talking about how to make a matrix. So for my touchpad project, I'll probably be heavily referencing this. Or something like this, like a diamond pattern. That would look pretty cool. So yeah, in addition to that, I cross-reference um, for sort of an algorithm. Um, look, I cross-reference cross this TI document, and this one's called Capacitive Touch Gesture Software and Tuning. And this talks about um, like calibration and a state diagram of how to detect like different type of touch gestures, whether it's just a single press, a tap and hold, or like a slide. And this was actually pretty interesting to go through. It's pretty standard stuff in terms of like button polling. So it's nothing really out there, but it's just, you know, the description is oriented towards capacitive uh, touch sensors. So I thought that was pretty interesting. And I found this, um, you know, if you're, if you're more into uh, PowerPoints, <laughs> I found this PowerPoint which is taking quite a while to load, uh, from NXP about um, using you know, an 8-bit MCU as a smart touch sensor. And this is a lot more general information at the beginning. It doesn't really get into the meat and potatoes until you start seeing graphs and, um, and flow charts. <laughs> but yeah, this sort of helped me visualize what's going on with the sensing. And they also go into uh, electro design as well. And how to route things away from each other and what the proper clearance should be. So yeah, if you guys are interested, um, I'll have all these documents. These were all like super useful for me. And I even Googled um, just like generic shapes for different types of touch sensors to get an idea of um, how exactly to, to implement it. And for my next uh, step of this project, I'm now looking into how to make uh, you know, touch pads or touch panels that can sense, you know, your finger at any point on the pad. So that's sort of going to be my next step. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this ended up working <laughs> really well. I, this isn't very practical. Uh, this isn't, this is just sort of a, a proto board. I'm not going to stick this into a project, project enclosure or anything like that. But yeah, the idea of being able to stick capacitive buttons, you know, and make my own user interface without having to like cut holes or have mechanical buttons are really cool. I also want to try putting like an LED to backlight from the bottom so that the pads, the buttons will light up depending on what modes you're doing or by touch. There's so many cool things you can do with capacitive sensors. And this is very similar to, you know, the technology that's used in every modern day touch panel, like on this laptop or my tablet or my phone. So it's actually really cool to play around with. It has a pretty low barrier to entry. Um, you can buy chips that do all of it for you, uh, like I mentioned. Uh, but using these libraries, you could do it with nothing more than a single resistor per pad, which is crazy. And all the rest is just done in software. Yeah, anyway, hopefully you guys are interested. Um, if you have any ideas of like ways I can expand this or neat things I could do, I'm, I'm probably going to be throwing together some more orders uh, for new ideas for testing for boards. So just let me know in the comments below. And hopefully if it's in time for you know the next video, I'll be able to implement them and test them. And then we can figure out what exactly we want to make as like an end product uh, that would benefit from having touch buttons. So anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Once again, super huge thanks to JLCPCB. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.